Hello there, my fellow mythologians, and welcome back to my rather struggling series, known for now as the Mythical Creatures Lore. In the last two episodes, we covered two very well-known mythical monsters in the form of the Sphinx and the Minotaur. One thing those two had in common, though, was a rich association with Greek mythology, even though the Sphinx is probably most famous for its Egyptian association. Today, though, we are gonna distance ourselves from the rich kids on the block, so to say, and talk about something different. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Manticore. Not that it is relevant to anyone, but the Manticore is also one of my favorite mythical beasts as well. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a few things about it, shall we? Deep in the Indian jungle, there is a creature there, lurking, always hungry for prey. Its head is that of a man with a long beard, but its body is that of a mighty lion. This creature has a magnificent tail that stretches out far behind it. The tail resembles that of a scorpion, and has many stings in it which it can use to render its prey defenseless. This terrible monster lurks in the reeds, and appears to its victim as just an old man until it is too late. A manticore is a mythological creature that was said to be unconquerable. They are thought to be one of the mightiest of beasts, and were capable of devouring every animal in the jungle except for the elephant. There is no given explanation why these creatures were unable to defeat the elephants, only some, air tags, documentation, which said for some reason the elephants were able to escape them. Originally, the term manticore came into the English language from the Latin manticora, which was borrowed from the Greek manticoras. The Greek version of the word, in turn, is actually an erroneous pronunciation of martikoras, from the original early Middle Persian word martiaxvar, which translates as man-eater where Martia means man, and Kvar or Ksvar means to eat. According to Persian lore, this creature was able to devour any kind of beast, except for the elephants of course, without leaving behind any kind of remains. However, despite its dominance in the jungle, the manticore had an especially intense hunger for human flesh. It was said a man was enough if that was all that was available but much rather preferred to lie in wait for a minimum of two men, or even three, and devour all of them. It was rumored that the manticore could easily handle killing men, and it could kill many more than just three if the chance presented itself. The manticore is often described as a mighty beast with fearsome features. The head of it is often said to be similar to that of a man. In many accounts, this head also has a beard, and features eyes that are either blue or grey. From a distance, just the head of the manticore is not so terrifying. It isn't until the victim closes enough to the monster to see its open mouth and three rows of sharp teeth, that the true nature of the monster becomes known. There is also great emphasis on the body of the beast. It is always described as similar to that of a lion, but has a brilliant hue of red, often regarded as scarlet in color. The manticore's body is often much bigger than that of a normal lion, and capable of performing impressive feats like incredibly fast and agile speed. Additionally, the claws of the beast are known to be very sharp. With a single swipe of its paw, it can rip apart a man. There are also some versions of the manticore describing the creature as having a pair of mighty wings, which allow it to fly in pursuit of its prey. These accounts normally describe the wings as similar to those of a dragon. Last but not least is the fearsome tail of the creature. The tail of the manticore is said to resemble that of a scorpion, and has on it several stings which are poisonous to all creatures, except once again the elephants. It is important to note, however, that the distance is not an issue for the manticore. If it is far away from its intended prey, it has the option of shooting the stings like arrows from a bow. And now, if even this was not OP enough, every sting that is fired from the tail of the creature is quickly regenerated. 
Thus, the thing can keep firing until the prey is down. It is also also important to note that while the manticore has a human head, it cannot speak any human language. Instead, it is said that a creature sounds like a trumpet. This was considered to be the first sign of warning that the creature was roaming about. The manticore originated in ancient Persian mythology and was brought to the Western mythology by Cathesius, a Greek physician at the Persian court in the 5th century BC. The Romanized Greek Pausanias, in turn, in his work The Description of Greece, recalled the strange animals he had seen in Rome and commented, and I quote, The beast described by Cathesius in his Indian history, which he says is called Martikoras by the Indians and Maneater by the Greeks, I am inclined to think it is the lion. But that it has three rows of teeth along each paw and spikes at the tip of its tail, with which it defends itself at close quarters, while it hurls them like an archer's arrows at more distant enemies. All of this, I think, is a false story that the Indians pass on from one another owing to their excessive dread of the monster. End quote. The historian Pliny the Elder didn't share Pausanias' skepticism. He followed Aristotle's natural history by including the Martikoras, mistranscribed as Manticorus, and thus passing it into European languages among his descriptions of animals in Naturalis Historia. The Book of Pliny was widely enjoyed and uncritically believed throughout the Middle Ages, during which the manticore was often illustrated in bestiaries. An eastern version of the manticore is said by some locals to inhabit the jungles of Southeast Asia, stalking and eating villagers at night. Some have considered the manticore to be nothing more than a tiger, either a Bengal tiger or a Caspian tiger, its fur appearing red in the sun. While those who saw such animals, who have been known to attack and even eat humans from time to time, would naturally describe them as fearsome. But for those who had never seen them at all, their characteristics would sound fantastic. Thus, the three rows of teeth and the spines upon the tail could very well have been just embellishments on the tails of a simple tiger. It is also likely that the story originated to explain the many missing people venturing into the jungle who never returned. It was likely easier to write off the disappearances of loved ones as being at the hands of an unconquerable monster instead of just a vicious forest animal. These stories also likely helped save some people by preventing too many inexperienced travelers or hunters from going too far into the woods alone, as well as curbing the curiosity of the younger children. Behave or the manticore will come to eat you. One of the main inspirations for the manticore is the creature known as the chimera. Now, this thing was one of the most famous and feared monsters in Greek mythology, and was thought to be the offspring of Typhon and Echidna. It was often described as being a lion with the head of a goat rising from the back of the creature, and the tail ending in the head of a snake. However, there are variations of the monster which claim the chimera had a lion's head and the body of a goat. Nevertheless, they were believed to bring disaster, and were even thought to be able to breathe fire. Any sighting of the creature was believed to be a bad omen, and you're also gonna see why that is relevant in a minute. Over time, the name Chimera pretty much became synonymous with any type of animal with the features of at least two other known animals put together. During the Middle Ages, the manticore was sometimes seen as a symbol of the prophet Jeremiah, but positive connotations never seem to stick with this mythical creature. Its ferocious manner and terrifying appearance quickly made it a symbol of evil, and the manticore in Europe came to be known as an omen of evil tidings, just like the chimera in ancient Greece. To see a manticore was to see a forthcoming calamity, thus it came to imply only bad luck, like the proverbial black cat. The manticore, or mantiguer, first appeared in English heraldry in 1470, as a badge of William Hastings, the first Baron Hastings, and also in the 16th century as a badge by Robert Radcliffe, the first Earl of Sussex. The manticore made a rather late appearance in heraldry, 
during the 16th century, influencing some mannerist representation, such as Bronzino's allegory, The Exposure of Luxury. More often though, it was used in decorative schemes known as grotesque of the sin of fraud, which was conceived as a monstrous chimera with the beautiful face of a woman. It was never as popular as other mythological creatures used in heraldry, like the griffin for example, most likely because it always maintained an element of malevolence about it. While not as popular as other mythical creatures, like dragons, griffins, or even the minotaur, the manticore still managed to keep itself alive in more recent times and via pop culture. It has been featured in many works of literature, predominantly the fantasy genre. It's also a pretty common sight in video games, where it is almost always a boss creature of some description, or at the very least a higher tier of monster. Very interestingly, in my opinion, is the fact that almost everyone seemed to agree, subconsciously, that the manticore is a very powerful creature, never to be used in a weakling role like a goblin or a satyr. Last but not least, it is also a very powerful creature in our favorite Warhammer fantasy setting, where it can be used as a powerful mount by mighty malevolent characters, or it is an apex predator living on its own. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the legendary beast known as the Manticore for today. I do honestly hope you enjoyed learning from this video as much as I did putting it all together. At least for me, by far the most creepy aspect of this thing is the stalking practices it employs. I mean, just imagine walking around your village or something, and there's just this head of an old man looking at you from the reeds. Is the manticore among your favorite mythological creatures? Let us all know what you like or dislike about them in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Also, if you'd like to stay up to date with my content, please click the bell notification icon, as apparently sometimes YouTube doesn't want you to watch my videos. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing off.